You see, Treblinka was one of the four camps where the real killing operation was done, Operation Reinhardt. Operation Reinhardt began in April 1942 and ended in October 1943 under the command of an SS general called Lobochnik. Lobochnik, or Dido, or Dido Lobochnik. There were four camps, Treblinka in Poland, Sobibor, Belzec, and Majdanek. And the reason I mention these four cases is because in January 1943, at the time they were collecting statistics for that report, the chief of police in Lublin sends a code message to Adolf Eichmann in Berlin. We decoded it. And in that code message he says, here's the operation results for the previous two weeks in the Reinhardt camps. He said, and up to the end of December 1942, the figure is as follows. The, the actual intercepted message is dated January the 12th, 1943. He says, up to December the 31st, 1942, the total figure is as follows. 1,274,166 1, in the camps T, S, uh, L, uh, T, T, S, B, and uh, M. Which are trebly and considerable versions of my identity. So, deep look, um, it, it, again, it's an unsatisfactory clue because the actual intercepted message isn't it explicit, it just gives a number, it doesn't say what they're talking about, it could have been bags of potatoes, but from the core hair report we have the identical number, which of course raises the possibility that one of those documents is a fake. Not the core hair report, because the, stats, the statistician's report is been in the files ever since the 1950s. Line this statistician himself confirmed to me that he'd written it. Is the intercept there possibly fake? Has been put in there because it's a key document. It totally refutes what the revisionists say. Um, it may be. It's got four or five inconsistencies inside the document. It's, a, it's one page, rather like this. It's a, these pages weren't just single pages, they were usually four or five pages. Each, each intercept is numbered. And uh, the Hoefler, the, this, this one I just mentioned, the Hoefler intercept, is a uh, <coughs> half page. It's page five. There were four page summary of uh, intercepted messages. But it's got one or two odd things about it. I'm going to mention one here. Um, page one, two, three, four, and five. It, it bound in the volume, glued into the volume out of sequence. Page five, page one, page two, page three, page four. As though something has happened to it. Um, and there's internal evidence that suggests it, it may be um, fake. 20% of me says that it's fake. 80% of me says that it's genuine. You don't often find fake documents in British archives. In which case, it is a key. It gives a figure to 1942 for the killing operations. We know that the killing operation went on until October 1943. So probably the same number was killed in, in, the, in 1943. So you come up to 2.5 million straight away, or whatever they were talking about, and it's got to be Jews. Because we intercept a message in October 1943, uh, a very simple message saying it, all police stations in Eastern Europe in, have been alerted that 700 Jews have broken out, broken out of the camp in Syria and a major operation is to be mounted to bring every single one back inside the camp. So there was a camp called Sobibor, it did house Jews, and it was sufficiently important that they all be brought back, uh, without exception, that every police force in Central Europe was alerted to this hue and cry. You see, th these intercepts, they're well like a mosaic. You've got a mosaic, but you've only got kind of every tenth stone. But if you've got sufficient intelligence and knowledge, you can join the dots between the stones to fill in a pretty good idea of what they're talking about. Here's another, here's another thing. I mentioned that the guy called Kloboshnik ran the whole of Operation Reinhardt, the killing operation. Forget about Auschwitz, that's unimportant. Auschwitz is just a Disneyland theme park now where the tourists go to have a look at a building and shut up. <clears throat> that isn't where the killing was done. The killing was done in these four camps, the Operation Reinhardt camps, under Odila Kloboshnik. In October 1943, Himmler makes a speech in Posen, Poznan. We got the actual chance, we got a tape recording of him speaking. So we don't know exactly what he said. He's speaking to SS generals. There's a hundred of them in a, in a hotel in Poznan. And, and top secret. And he says, uh, you, you guys are tough. You know what it looks like when you see a hundred bodies lying, a uh, thousand bodies lying side by side. He said, a lot of you understand why we've been killing the Jews. A lot of you don't understand why we've been killing the, Jew, the women and children as well. He said, because I had to take this decision on myself. There's no point killing the Jews if we don't kill the women and children too. Otherwise, their grandsons and sons will come back to haunt us to take revenge on us. 
I have to take the decision myself. He didn't say the Fuhrer took the decision, he said, I have to take the decision. It's very interesting that the language that's actually used. Interesting also is the fact that Himmler afterwards orders every SS general present to sign a statement to the effect, a list, yes, I was there and heard what you said. And those who weren't there have to sign a separate list undertaking to read the transcript of what he said. And again, you, you wonder, what's going on here? Um, I think he's making them all accomplices after the fact. But if you read the whole transcript again, you realize he's not actually telling them the scale on which it's gone on. He's, he just said, well, we've been killing Jews, yes. But they all know that. Probably every German knew that. But not the scale of the, 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 the systematic nature of it. And the interesting thing again is that Globochnik is one of the SS generals who's going to attend, and he's coming up from Trieste. When the Operation Reinhardt finished, he got, the, he got the booth and he was sent down to Trieste to, 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 to take charge as police officer, senior police officer, and the Adriatic coastal region. He's on his way up to attend this meeting in Poznan, and he gets a message from Himmler, October the 4th, 1943, saying, uh, SS uh, Gruppenführer Globochnik, you are to turn back and go back to Trieste. I do not want you present at the meeting. We intercepted it. It's in the files. It's in one of these volumes. I'm looking at it, thinking, well, that's interesting. Globochnik. He's one of the names I've been looking out for all the time, of course. Why is Himmler saying, don't come? Globochnik knew where the boys were buried, literally. He was the one who ran the whole operation. Himmler doesn't want him talking to all these guys. He wants to give them limited knowledge to make them accomplices. So they all shut up. He doesn't want them all coming back on him saying, you've done what? So Globochnik not allowed to attend. So I'm going to give you two more examples of the kind of real history you get from reading the intercepted messages, and they shut up. One concerns me personally. In my Dresden book, I gave the figure of the number of people we killed in Dresden, and that two-hour air raid on Dresden is 135,000 people burned alive. And I still stick to that figure. It was given to me by the German who was put in charge of the Bureau of Missing Persons in Dresden, <coughs> Hans White. He was a school teacher up to that raid, up to the time the raid took place. On the morning after the raid, he had no school and he had no school children. They were all dead. So the city council put him in charge of the dead persons division of the missing persons bureau, it was newly created. And at the end of the war, they're still not finished doing the job. He said, we built up a huge card index, me and my staff. And I, he kept a diary. He said, by the time the Russians entered the city, the, the day before the war ended, that the job was still incomplete, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident that the, the final death roll was 135,000. And I used that figure in my book, giving him as the source. And in the Lipstadt trial, the judge, Mr. Justice Gray, said David Bergen is a liar and falsifier of history because of the figure of 135,000, because the established historian's consensus now has the figure of only 25,000 people killed in those two hours. Well, even 25,000 is, is a bad figure for people to, you know, for us to have burned a light to 25,000 people in the space of two hours, all non combatants, all women and children and men. Uh, refugees, the city was full of the half million refugees that night fleeing from the Red Army in the east. And I had to lie down and take it. And if you read Wikipedia and all the other entries on me now, you'll see that I am a liar and a falsifier history based on that. And then one day I'm reading the, the intercepted messages, these 43 volumes, and I've come across a message from the police chief of Breslau, which was the city that the Russians were besieging. <coughs> on the night of the air raid, he had sent 200 police officers to help in rescue operations in Dresden, which was quite close. And a few days later he sends a message to the police chief of Dresden saying, can I have my police officers back please, what's happened to them? <clears throat> the message that he gets back, which we intercepted, says unfortunately only five of your men have survived. The other 195 are missing, and he says just to make sure you understand what I'm saying, when we say missing it means that they are, they're called to lighten. they are charred corpses lying in the ruins of Dresden. Charred corpses usually shrivel to the size of a doll about this size by the intense heat. The, 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 the thousand degree heat they were built up by the fast one. <clears throat> a month after that, March the 24th, 1945, my seventh birthday in fact, that's why I remember the date, the police chief of Dresden sends a message to the uh, police officers in uh, police authorities in Berlin as follows, which I found out, which I found in the archives about two months ago. You can imagine the whoop I let out silently, because of course in the archives you don't whoop out loud. He says, um, the Lord Mayor of Dresden, after the air raid, after the terror raid on, on Dresden, the Lord Mayor of Dresden established a missing persons bureau and seven local registries. 
they have registered as of today's date up to 100,000 people as missing. Remember, missing meant dead, charred, or charred corpses. And to be registered as missing, somebody had to list you as missing. If you were a refugee family from Breslau, fleeing the Red Army, camping out in the streets of Dresden that night, and your whole family is wiped out, there is nobody to list you as missing. So you understand why I was exhilarated to find that intercepted message, which of course none of these conformist historians has bothered to consult. And no doubt they will still continue to pontificate about the only 25,000 people who were killed that night. They will still continue to call me a liar. 